Welcome to another episode of Boomer vs. Zoomer. What's up? We've got Temp Love in the building. Can you? Hello. Is there like uh, fog horns? Is that what they're called? What, which artist uses a lot of those? Is it T Pain? All of them. Or is it all? It's just all. Pretty of them. much all. You're not an artist unless you use that. Okay, got it. Yeah. But yeah, we got the first half of Temp Love. Broden, this is the shorter one, and then Julian. On the right. taller Wait, one. should I like introduce first and last name? Is that how it works for like artists or like his first name? You know, like I don't know. What I think the... first name is cooler. There's a little bit of mystery behind it. Oh, yeah. okay. Like, yeah. Where do you come from? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna no call idea. you Jules. Yeah, they actually. gotta they gotta look. Those up. people call me Jules. Really? Yeah. Actually, he yeah. calls me Jules. Call oh shit! If you're under the age of four, you probably call me Juju, but yeah. anyone above four calls me Jules. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna call you Juju. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Okay. But yeah, welcome in. Thank you for guys. Uh, oh, thank you for guys coming in. Thank you guys for coming <laughs> in. I'm really glad to have you both here. Uh, I feel like Julian, we've gotten to see and get to know each other more this year. Yeah, I would say like we met kind of like intermittently between like parties mostly. Yeah. But then now, like now that I know that like you're famous, I'm finally going to invite you on. Obviously, <laughs> duh. So, yeah. Uh, welcome. How are you guys doing today? What What's up? Great, great. He was actually saying. Uh, I think the first time he started meeting people was at a hundred thieves party. Yes, yeah. I actually remember the exact party. It was for it was a JBL party. It was when Gunna wasn't in prison. It was right before he went to prison. Yeah, I heard it was like JHB right before he went was to prison, the right? last interview he did before he went. That's to prison. crazy. <laughs> that's nuts to me. Yeah, that's making history. <laughs> we we got in pre-prison. Yeah, pre-prison Gunna. That's cool. Wait, why did he go to prison? Uh, like uh, Rico charges. Uh, what is a Rico charge? Uh, take too long to explain. Fuck. <laughs> is it like cool? Come on, boomer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, not that, okay, sorry. Not that crime is cool, but it's not like. It's one of the cool crimes. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, okay. It's the crime you can rap about in a sense. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to say. <laughs> Which like, is the reason why it's you're not tax charged. related, yeah, right? Because yeah, I always <laughs> find tax related crime to be like the most boring. Like if you hear like. Right. Oh, they went to. Pr oh, they, they they didn't pay their taxes. Like Someone should rap about that. Yeah. I'm sure someone has. Normalize rapping about taxes. Yeah. No, let's not normalize rapping about. Ta no, that sounds like a terrible. How about your next song is about taxes then? Are we Th rapping? That's one song, yeah. Between the two of you, who would you say is the better rapper? I, th I think we're equally good at rapping. Equally good at rapping. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We had a uh, a brief stint in college where we would produce beats for kids in Florida. Yeah. Like rappers. That is so specific. Yeah. Wait. That's so. A fun period. We left that behind though. Now yeah, we're temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about just producing beats for kids in Florida. That's like that's a great com like uh, origin story. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's probably not your actual origin story, right? It was a chapter. It was a chapter. It was a chapter. A chapter. That's like chapter three, yeah. probably. So you guys met in college? Yeah. Yeah. How did you guys meet? On set. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We met on set uh, for a mutual friend of ours. He was directing a. It wasn't his thesis, was it? No, it was his yeah, AP. Oh yeah, so yeah, he he was directing like a ten minute short film. Yeah, um, and we were both assistant directors. It was a strange movie where there were like seven assistant directors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just try to get as many on set as possible. Don't they usually never just have work like here? One? Normally, set, there's like right? a first and a second. Uh -huh. He had a lot of assistant directors. You just didn't yeah. trust any of them. Well, it was a movie where there was like, I don't know, a, a huge cast of like, it was about like a, a two rival gangs and it was a big oneer. So you, he needed just a ton of directors to direct everyone he couldn't see as they were running through. Oh, I, okay. Each person was assigned. Yeah. Like they had gang. their handler, basically? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, I think yeah. I was in charge of four gang members. Who did you have? I, they didn't trust me with that many gang members. <laughs> <laughs> Far less. Far yeah. less. Yeah, they roll in the totem. I had two gang members, yeah. actually. Yeah. I wasn't I checked the call sheet. One? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember you as the just the tall assistant director. Yep. Um, you literally stood out. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I knew he wasn't a gang member right off the bat. He's way what, too. Tall. What about that? Like, what about him didn't read gang member to you? Um, probably everything about him. Yeah. At the time, I did play a dead gang member at the end, though. That's true. Oh, That's so true. he is a little more gangster than you'd expect. Yeah. A little. He has a little, little uh. Pop to his stuff. Yeah. I was lying on the floor for so long I fell asleep. Really? Yep. When? How did you wake up? They they finished the scene. They're like, all right, everyone can get up, and they like shook me and like, hey, we can we can go. <laughs> 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 it's over. Everyone's gone home. Yeah. Wait, so you guys were both film students? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Wait, so how did you like fall into making music together then? Well, that's when we started living together. Yeah, that's a funny one. We okay. were living together. Both got back into making music separately. I had come home one day and his his door was like right after the front door. And I was hearing something coming from his room that was like, it'd be like the same part of a song, like playing and stopping, playing and stopping. It's like, okay, someone's editing something. But then I opened the door, I'm like, are you, are you making music right now? He's like, yeah. And this is a period where we were doing like EDM. I was like, yeah, I'm just kind of like toying with stuff. I'm like, I'm also toying with stuff down the <laughs> hall. Should we just like start toying together? Wait, were you guys like close when you became roommates or was it kind of like a more of a convenient situation? There was a large vetting process. Yeah, large yeah. vetting process. I went through multiple steps just to get in that room that I did. Yeah. Um, but I made it through. Yeah. 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 Cuz you guys people voted. Yeah. It was a it was a well-known house on campus. Yeah. I cannot tell if this is like one long fucking thing no, or if no, you're being I wish serious. it wasn't. Wait. It wasn't. So, it was like a well-known like a prestigious house. Of course, yeah. Yeah. You guys, fuck you guys. <laughs> I we're, can't we're, tell with the tone. We were known as the Sycamore Boys, yeah. The Sycamore Boys? Yeah. Yeah. The fuck? The, I'm sorry, this pillow a... fell over and hit me and scared the shit out of me. <laughs> okay. Once in, yeah. Um, wait, so the story, I'm taking at face value. Yeah. Broden was a part of a gang called the Sycamore Boys. There okay. was an available spot mm -hmm. in which Julian went through a long and extensive vetting process in order to get the room. Yes. Well, we, we yeah, had kicked a member out, and so there's a free room. Why did he get kicked out? Uh, just wasn't pulling his weight. What were the Sycamore boys known for? I can't tell you everything, but it was a good time. So, okay, <clears throat> okay so how, how did you hear about the Sycamore boys, Julian? Through Broden? Um, through, through, I guess I met Nico first. Yes. Yeah. Who, I don't know if you've met Nico. I don't know if you've met Nico. Maybe he shot very amazing cinematography. He yeah. shot a lot of stuff for. He shot the Bleachers music video actually. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 He shoots feature films. He shoots Mar. Oh, the the Charlie Day film that's like being advertised right now. Uh, Is the the meme one? Fool's Paradise. That one. No, I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of uh, fuck. What's his name? The previous uh, um, shit. Uh, who sings Watermelon Sugar again? Harry Styles. Styles. I was thinking of Harry Styles, the Harry Styles movie, no. oh, which no. was being memed. No, no, no. who's Charlie he, Day? He would never. Uh, shoot always sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, Lu Luigi. I'm thinking Charlie. Yeah, Pluth. Luigi. Yeah, yeah. Luigi. Yeah, Luigi. I'm thinking Charlie Pluth, yeah. which I I'm like mixing up three fucking different things. All right. Yeah. So Charlie Day has a film. Which film is it? Fool's Paradise. I Fool's think Paradise. Is and then he that. shot that. He shot that. He yeah. shot that. He shot like a bunch of movies. Yeah. He, he's, he's shot Marvel stuff too. Yeah. Damn, he's that's super really cool. talented. He's a big boy. Oh, is he the one you tell me about sometimes? Or like, what? Actually, we might have to cut this out. I don't know. Like, you sometimes like have to do go for some shooting for um, a friend for certain opportunities. I he's the one <laughs> who I'll say this in a way that doesn't have to be cut out. He's the one where I was going to go to Mexico. Yes. Yes, and mm -hmm. I and I couldn't go to Korea with you, and then he got like this huge opportunity. And it's like, hey, you should go to Korea. And I was like, okay. God, sorry. This this is the most cryptic podcast yeah, yet. No one's going to get <laughs> there's this. There's like 40% of it is just like, yeah, the Sycamore Boys. We can't tell you everything about them. Also, yeah. there's a director that we can't tell you everything that he's working on or what the, he does. Our manager does not want us to say anything. Yeah. And we can't say his, our manager's name either. Got it. <laughs> for what? Re is that like typical for... No, I'd say it's very atypical, actually. Very atypical. We we don't we don't have a manager. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's fuck you guys. Oh my god, I just brought you on to fucking troll me. Jesus Christ. No, no. Wait, so how many songs do you guys have now? Released? Yeah. Three. We have three, three released. Okay. Which yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I think everyone has an idea of what Temple of is just by listening to everything on Spotify. Um, but like our idea is is, it's interesting because we have a lot of songs that we're kind of just. It's true. Yeah, we have a full library. It's like, oh, this yeah. is our sound, and then we have to remind ourselves, like, oh, they only know that this is what's released, and this is right. what they associate yeah. us with. Yeah. I know that you guys have a song releasing soon, right? It's called. Wait, am I allowed to talk? I think I'm allowed to talk. When is this coming out? Everything is temporary. It this might come out like right before it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It's called Chitta Kuda. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's not called everything is temporary. Yeah, those are just buzzwords. Those are just oh. hot buzzwords that we're using for visualizers. So Wex just sent me a bunch of fucking lies, <laughs> is what I received. That's what it said on Twitter. All right, all right. Wex, you've been coulda. such a director. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I do genuinely like your songs a lot. Thank I, you. I I feel like it kind of captures the sound from like growing up, you know, like that yeah. that kind of like nostalgic feeling, the music. Because, dude, I, I see some, like, pop punk or, like, pop music on, like, TikTok every now and then. And it's just, like, some of the fucking worst garbage I've ever heard in my entire mm. life. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I just remember the lyrics being, like, I miss my ex. I told her to suck my dick. Or something like that. All right, I don't know. It was that's just, it, like, yeah, that should, sounds that, right there. Yeah, yeah, I'll get <laughs> God. Maybe it was you guys that I saw on TikTok. <laughs> but No, that's cool. That means a lot. That's I think with Bleachers, it was very much... Um, Trying to capture that like high school on a summer day, yeah. Um, just kicking it with your friends, kind of vibe. Yeah, and I think that's like perfect. I, I I don't know. I'm not very good at discovering music these days, but I was. It felt very fresh to me. Like I enjoyed listening to that because, like, I mean, I'm the kind of I'm the kind of guy that kind of listens to the same fucking album for like months at a time. I'm What's just your like, go to? I'm still listening to uh, Gabriel by Kashi. Oh, I mean that. Yeah, yeah. great album. Still listening incredible. to. Uh, uh, Damn, or like damn, but I started listening to Damn from Kendrick Lamar again oh, yeah. nice. recently. Yeah. Um, there's the Joji album whose name mm, escapes mm. me, the most recent one. Um, fuck, it has like glimpse of uh, glimpse of us uh, yeah, on it. Yeah. And so. I know the album art. I forgot that I forgot the name of the Smithereens? album. Smithereens. 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 There yeah. we go. Yes, great. And also, yeah, just been listening to kind of the same couple of albums. Have you over. seen them live? Joji, I've we only have. seen live at festivals. I've never cool. been to like an actual concert, but for him. Yeah. But I've seen TikToks of it, and it's they're wild. Just, it, it's, I hear he does some. Funny he does some stuff crazy stuff shit. Stage, yeah. Like he will just talk about like super sexual stuff, and then like launch into like a sad boy song. <laughs> yeah. But then the sad boy song then becomes like an EDM rave. Yeah. Oh, like he ups the tempo, and That's then just so like cool. yeah, he goes like one, two, three, let's go, and like just the like the typical EDC shit. Didn't yeah, he play great. Smash on stage? He did. Yeah. That's so cool. He has fun with it. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. I feel like part of him hates the label that he's just like sad boy music Mm -hmm. a little bit, even though he makes really good sad boy music (laughs) and kind of just like fucks around with like people's expectations. Like if you're going straight for going to his concert, going straight for like the Joji vibe of music, you're going to be kind of disappointed. But if you're going for like a mixture of Joji and like, you know, the pink men. Yeah. I think that's like more like the vibe that he's going Which for. Which I never got to watch. So I only know him as Joji. Yeah, I only got oh. more recently acquainted with some of his, the Pink Man stuff. Like so I, you're you're not familiar with like Vomit Cake or I've, oh, I've hair heard cake, of right? Hair Cake. Yes, I've heard of that from there's you. There's three. It's a, oh, there's a Vomit there's a Cake trilogy, too? Yes. Yeah, Michael Reeves showed me Hair Cake and I was like, this guy play, makes some of my favorite music. Hair Cake is Michael's favorite, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Do you know what Hair Cake is? No, but it sounds delicious. Brother, why don't you break it down for me what hair cake is? How how in depth should I get here? Just a little yeah, like overview. <laughs> uh yeah, censor whatever whatever needs to get censored. Um Hair Cake is a is a short film uh, made by Joji, um, Max Mofo, and iDubs and How to mm. Basic. Four four pillars of of old world YouTube. Um they would the, all the three Egyptian gods. Yeah. Mm. They they would join together in uh Wait, I want to say Australia or something, um, and just make these foul videos where they they're like vomiting throughout it. They're basically the the, the concept is they're gonna make a cake, and at the end of it, the cake will be done, and they will eat all of it. But to get there, you watch them vomit, shave each other's heads, piss, spit, smoke, and all of these fluids and materials go into making the cake. Mm. Is this back when he was filthy, Frank? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Emphasis on filthy. Back before yeah. he evolved, he changed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they would eat it. So it's not... And vomit while eating it. If you've got profusely. a weak stomach, don't watch it. Yeah, I wouldn't. It, it is like an era. It's like a different time, for That's sure. That's probably why he's so sad. Maybe. He misses this. He misses this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God. Uh, Broden, I have, I'm like a little more familiar with your day-to-day, but like Julian, I don't, like what does your day-to-day look like? Yeah. Um, so I work in the 3D animation space. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, one of my buddies, Tom and I started a animation, uh, studio back in college. Who Tom, was another Sycamore another boy? Another Sycamore boy. Yeah. Which, of which we 
The details are not forthcoming. Yes, yeah, quite yet. affiliation now. Okay. Um, and uh, we've been doing that for the past seven years. We have nine CG artists, all incredible, talented people. We're just down the street. Um, we do music videos, commercials, for visuals for artists, all that kind of stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. That's so cool. It's fun. It's super fun. I just, it's, yeah, it sounds like your job sounds really fun. And on top of it, you like make music on the side too. <laughs> like you're just like very fucking cool. Uh, not no. that I'm trying to gas you up too much here. Don't gas me up. I'll get too powerful. Yeah. You Please. really are getting, more, I can see your head inflating the I more know. I speak. It's crazy. Um, no, it's cool. It's, I, I mean, like, I get different things out of them. So like, I love what I do, you know, as a day job, what my full-time position is. And then uh, at night, the the Ableton signal is shown in the sky yeah. and I'll just go in and produce for a few hours. It's fun. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, with, you guys have three officially released songs? Three officially released songs. Yeah. Are you guys like aware at all of like kind of like your metrics, like your performance of last year? Last year, because I have the numbers in front of me. Sure. It's, it's uh, last year you guys had almost four million streams and over uh, half a million listeners on Spotify alone. Crazy. Which is one platform, three songs. Yeah, that's crazy. It's yeah. insane. We I don't think we realized specifically that Bleachers would blow up as much as it did. Yeah. Um, thanks to like obviously like people like you and everyone streaming it. Um, that was a huge win and. It seems like everyone, someone mentioned to you recently, right? They're like, the summer, it just feels like Bleachers has just taken over my summer, which yeah. is so yeah. crazy to hear. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also crazy when people run up and they like start yelling the lyrics at us. Like, yeah. Whoa, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's crazy, yeah. We, our original plan, I mean, you know, we didn't really have a plan going into Temple of um, years ago, but our dream was like, we want to have our track play in like a boba shop. I, I would want, okay, <laughs> I am going to start a motherfucking boba shop just to play <laughs> Temple of Music. I swear to God. Well, like, we get to see the playlist that people add our music to, and I'm pretty sure it's been added to oh, a yeah. fair amount of, like, uh, our first few songs were added to uh, to boba shops. And then that's cool. yeah. Bleachers played in a Zara. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, right. that's cool. how you know you made it. Yeah. And that's <laughs> how you know we made it. Wait, that's so cool. I yeah. wonder, like, who decided the playlist at that particular Zara? Is it, like, a co overhead That's corporate thing? That's what I wonder. I imagine Mr. Zara himself liked Bleachers yeah. and put it yeah. on. Um, Mrs. Zara, known uh, Templo fan, actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I imagine it's just, like, a, you know, sales associate who yeah. just was like, this is cool. That's really cool. I've, yeah. If, like, 88 Rising reached out to you guys, like, hey, like, would you like to, like, have a time slot at... Uh, uh, head in the clouds festival you know like maybe like 30 minutes would to you guys perform. be down yeah to perform would you do it well i don't know if we could film 30 minutes or fill 30 minutes yeah we would just play the th same three songs like five times we'd fill about eight minutes and then just talk but let's say they like gave you a, like a deadline like let's say yeah. next year 88 rising head in the clouds festival 2024 so you have like over a year like would you start be like oh like maybe we we'll pump, pump out some more music and then like because i know that you guys have like more songs yeah. that you guys are probably like, like still tinkering with. Yeah. Would that like per, like motivate you to like, oh shit, okay, let's like let's put out like six songs total. I think a year is a, we would definitely be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think we could do that. Yeah, okay. especially because I think just separate from the songs, we could, we would think of it creatively from like a you know, visual standpoint, yeah. and mm -hmm. like if we have a year to prep a thirty minute set, you know. Playing Smash for two minutes on stage. Yeah. Oh fuck doing yeah! This, yeah. doing that. I would just like start watching like stream bods of friends mm -hmm. on on stage to embarrass them. Like imagine if I just pulled up like a Masayoshi stream, like an old one, and John is just like in the crowd, just like cringing at himself as we're just like all watching a <laughs> vod from like two years ago. I would fucking Wait, love that. Those are great tour visuals. We should just get yeah, all the like most embarrassing clips from people and put them up on stage. Wait, that would actually be awesome yeah, too. Be and cool. you would be like catering to like kind of your audience a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, totally. All right, well. Just don't use mine. I will sue you <laughs> into oblivion. Uh, Coachella was cool though, which mm -hmm. we got to spend time at. Yeah, because um, it was like a taste of like what that world is, right? From a very like festival standpoint. Oh yeah, that was your first Coachella, right? That was my first Coachella. That was That's crazy. First festival in general. That first is wild to me. Festival, yeah, yeah. Because like, I mean, like, since you're kind of deeply entrenched in like the creative world i figured you'd be the type to be like going to a lot of these festivals yeah but like that was your first time that, that's wild i loved it it was so cool yeah i was definitely analyzing like i had the greatest time ever 
Um, but also, you know, when we saw Dominic Fike, all these things like I miss Dominic Fike. Dude, I know. But I don't remember what I was watching instead. I want to say it was Jackson Wang. Jai Wolf. Jai Wolf. Jai Wolf. Jai Which Wolf you said too. was really good too. It was, it was really good too. Yeah. But like the way people talked about Dominic Fike, it made me feel like I missed out on like the coming of like a religious figure. Into there this was world. one part before you got back that night where everyone was like, let's not hype it up too much for Peter's sake. Like, we want to make sure- Fuck! And you are ru- <laughs> Dude, Blau changed like his fucking Twitter header. Yeah. And, and yeah, every, I saw the Instagram stories. Everyone's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a Dominic Fike simp now. I'm just like, bro, I don't- I didn't even know who this person was beforehand. Yeah. But to be fair, I don't like really keep up with any of the current music, so. Well, your your rotation seems to be pretty cool. Yeah, Templo, well, we mostly. Well, I mean, I just listen to sad boy simpy music, but um, yeah, like, you know, Keshi is just like, kind of Keshi's, if i don't know what to uh, listen to i usually put on gabriel or like some keshi track gabriel was so good yeah we saw it were you yeah we, we all yeah saw we were there we were, yeah, yeah we were yeah. at keshi together yeah. and yeah we got to like hang out with him a little bit you know whatever like we're we're like we're cool like that <gasps> yeah we're cool like that i was so fucking drunk though i forgot to take a photo with him like i was just uh, talk, i was just talking the whole time and then after i left i was like i didn't get a fucking photo with him no. I, the only photo i have with him is like the group photo that we all took together yeah but like you know, like when I when I tell people me and Keshi are tight like that, like I have no, I don't have, have no it. Yeah. I need the proof, man. Similar situation for me. When we took our picture, uh, I was, you know, my face got super red from just I think I had some drinks, mm -hmm. and it's just the lighting is not good and it's directly on my face. Oh yeah, it's like, not flattering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, Keshi, and, and Keshi looks beautiful. Of course. Like he Dude, looks how like does he look god. so good after like performing on stage for like three hours? Yeah. And he's so calm and like, how are you not drenched in sweat? Yeah, that was the first time I met uh, his, fi his fiance, Mai. Yeah. And dude, she's just like so sweet. She's like such a nice person. And but it's just like so funny to me that Keshi, this guy who could like write such sad boy music, such simpy sad boy music. Is a oh, oh by the way I was I've been in a committed relationship with my childhood sweetheart yeah like I I don't know and then I heard that he actually writes his music based off his friends' experiences <laughs> so, oh I didn't know that so I, I'm just I like no idea I don't know how true that is that's like that is hearsay like but it makes would, sense to me I would be lying if I said we didn't I don't know if any of the release songs but like we that is a really fun way to songwrite yeah from just I mean like you know getting the tea getting the gossip from all your friends. Yeah. Um, and trying to put yourself in their shoes, and and also just have more fun without with it without getting so deep in right. the emotional part of it. Yeah. Well, you can also like kind of get more emotional with it because they're not your emotions that you're necessarily yeah. playing with. Yeah. Um, like you're not messing with your own headspace because it's not really your experience that you're speaking from. Yeah. Kinda. In a way, like I almost feel like I could be more truthful if I'm like getting into a character's head. And being like, okay, yeah, this this is how I would feel, you know? Yeah. Oh shit. This is we got the Jared Leto over here, the <laughs> fucking method actor. <laughs> well, I think like that's um like Frank Ocean's first album is I don't know if this is how accurate this is, but I I feel like I heard someone say that he uh the way he wrote each of those songs is he would just create a character and create like a deeply personal experience for that character and then write the song. That's crazy. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, I could never imagine. I mean, the idea of songwriting to me, like me songwriting is very cringe. Like, have, you, I, have you ever done it? Uh, I want to say that I probably took some vitamins and like thought like, whoa, like, bro, what if I just like wrote some music in my head right now? It was a crazy vibe. And it just like comes out. It sounds like it sounds like Nickelback or like Creed or some shit. Like a B12? What are you taking? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, you know, multivitamins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, definitely nothing like... <clears throat> anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the songwriting process sounds like really interesting. Like, I approaching it from like, oh, you are like embodying this persona that's not necessarily you. Like, that sounds pretty cool because it's like you're creating this fictional character. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of yeah. like a school research paper. Yeah. Well, what would you say is like the genre of your music, or do you do you think that it's not really encapsulated under one genre? We, I like hearing that from people like you. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I feel like we're very close to it. Our inspirations are very like all sorts of genres. Yeah, we yeah. pull from from everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to put it under one genre. There's like definitely like EDM. Uh, like some of the songs are like more or less like EDM inspired. Some have like kind of feels like a punk, not like maybe pop punk a little bit. You know? Yeah. Has 
I don't want to say alternative because I feel like that's such a huge no, umbrella no, no. term. But alt, I listen to a lot of like alt pop, mm-hmm. which is a genre that Spotify has been pushing a lot of, and it, I think like Bleachers is definitely up that. Yeah, that genre. It's good though. Like when I saw the music video for Bleachers, I was like, "Oh yeah, this 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 visual here very much invokes the feeling that I get from listening to the song." Like I felt like you matched it very like one to one, and like even like the the color grading of the video was like, "Oh, that's like perfect." That kind of like warm nostalgic feeling. Yeah. So yeah, isn't there like a fun fact around like the film used for for Bleachers or? Uh, yes, there <laughs> is. Uh, yes, the the film. The f- so yeah, shot by our friend Nico who. Obviously had Sick, uh, one of the Sycamore Boys, as, yes, as we've one stated. Yes, Sycamore Boys, um, done a lot of big projects. He got his hands on four rolls of leftover film from Euphoria, uh, the HBO show. Mm-hmm. And he was like... <laughs> in case you didn't yeah, know. Yeah, in case you didn't know. Uh, starring Dominic Fike. Uh, starring Dominic Fike. He, uh, Wait, Dominic Fike is in Euphoria? Yeah. He's in season yeah. two. Yeah. Which character is he? Have you seen season two? You know, I think I have, but I think it's been so long that my brain is completely just blotted out. He's a part of the love triangle with the main character. Oh, that's Dominic Fike? Yeah. Isn't he so cute? Oh. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Okay, wait. (laughs) That's tripping me out because I think I just saw a headline recently saying that Dominic Fike and the actress for Euphoria... Hunter or whatever. Hunter, yeah. I heard they just broke up. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, I I guess now it is occurring to me that they probably met on the set of Euphoria and started dating. I'd assume so. Okay. So, okay. It's all coming together now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, the film used to shoot them and start their relationship Mm -hmm. for leftover roles, he got his hands on them. It said, like, Euphoria on the... Yeah, literally on the tin, it's, like, Euphoria. Uh, And so... We shot the music video with those four last rolls of Euphoria. So you guys are basically by order of like what's the fucking mathematical property? Like, where like one degree away? Yeah, you're okay. you guys are like one degree away from being best friends with Zendaya. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. And that was my takeaway. The Bleachers music video is canon to the Euphoria universe. That's true. Yeah. So season three. Season three. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. I could totally see you guys being extras in Euphoria. Like you I would guys love are just, to, he yeah. can play a mean dead person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure there will be dead more dead people. What, is that a spoiler? Is it too soon? Well, no. I, guess I they, like how we're looking around. I guess you like, don't, the I guess, director. I guess of you don't know like what I'm talking them. about necessarily in Euphoria, Not a right? Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Z- Zendaya, is no, that cool? No. There will probably be more dead <laughs> yeah, people yeah. in Euphoria. Zendaya nodded. So yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Dude, okay. Also, was Zendaya at Coachella? She was. So this is the our weekend. Yeah. I'm telling people that I saw it, even though I didn't see it. Oh, whose set was it? Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Who makes all the music for Euphoria. Oh. You know, I would have figured... Oh, wait. Actually, are Zendaya and Hunter... What's her last name? Schaefer. Hunter Schaefer. Are they, are they like, besties? I don't know. Okay, because I'm thinking, like, if Hunter Schaefer and Zendaya are besties, and Dominic Fike and Hunter Schaefer just broke up, does that mean, like... Do you think Zendaya and Dominic Fike would be like at odds with each other or something? I don't know. Also, that makes a weird relationship on on screen set. Oh yeah, for people who are romantically involved but just broke up in real life. Yeah, yeah, that is a little complicated. Yeah. Didn't the director that. of Euphoria tell Dominic Fike though, like, "Hey, we can if you, the moment you want to get killed oh, yeah. off and do your music thing, like, go ahead." Yeah, he he, he called him up. And was like, "Hey, man, like, I know you want you're a rock star. I get it." If you need me to kill you off, I'll like, do we it. We could easily write you out in yeah. like one episode. No no problem. It's yeah. euphoria, dude. <laughs> like, it's not crazy. <laughs> like, if you're in, like, an episode of Community, then it's like, oh, f- uh Actually, you know what? Community, I feel like it could get written off pretty easily. They Didn't did they kind of do that Chevy with Chase. Chevy Chase? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, I just started... I was reading some stuff about Chevy Chase, and like, dude, that guy is... Yeah. That guy's a piece of work. That's for a sure. A lot of the old actors. Bill Murray, same thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They're just bad, bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate. We we don't condone that. Yeah, it's kind of hard though because it's like I'm s- doing the whole separating the art from the artist becomes harder and harder with each day because you're finding out that almost all of your favorite actors or actresses or artists are like kind of scummy in one way or another, or like yeah. a lot of them are. I think they're all trying to like equalize because then like one's like super scummy and then everyone's like, oh no, I'll get scummy too. And then we kind of think they're all scummy, and yeah. they're kind of. He's like, oh, you kind of have to accept that they're yeah. just kind of scummy. It's was like, 
if everyone's special, no one is that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys met anyone that you looked up to, but then met them and you were like, oh, God, you are not who I thought you were. Yeah, go ahead and say that. Yeah, oh, you don't need to say their name. You know, I'm going to be honest. I don't think so. I haven't really met that many actors or actresses, to be honest. Well, I I saw, uh, what's his name? Fuck. He is the really, really old school porn star that has, like, facial hair and he's a little overweight. Ron oh. Jeremy? Ron Jeremy. I saw yeah. Ron Jeremy at a French restaurant and, then, like, I think it came out that he's kind of, like, a not-so-great guy. I think he's a Allegedly, wrestler, allegedly. So I don't yeah. actually know. Is you he, interact like, with super sick right now? or? Did- I heard about that, too. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me too much that like old So your celebrity kinda... was Ron Jeremy. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, cool. I had a very good experience with Will Ferrell. Oh, yeah. nice. I was working at my shitty low paying job at an arcade and Will Ferrell came in with his son and their soccer team oh my for like God. a party. And then Will Kicking Ferrell... and screaming for real. Yeah, actually. That's insane. But he was like very low key, very introverted, kind of shy. And then I just, I, I was the one helping their party. And then after the party was over, I was like, hey, by the way, I just want to let you know I'm a huge fan. And he's like, hey, man, th- I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's awesome. It. We hands. I, I wanted to take a photo so badly, but I was like, I'm just, I'm going to just like be the cool guy that just like expresses appreciation without like, you know, o- overstepping. He didn't offer you a spot on the team. No, he did not. Not on his, uh, on the U12. Uh, not on his like eight year old son's soccer team. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. He seems like a really nice guy. I'm glad, like, or just, I'm glad, because he's, like, one of my favorite comedians growing up, like, Anchorman, yeah, and, like, Step Brothers, uh, Step Brothers uh, yeah. Talladega Nights, just, like, I know he kind of plays a samey-ish role in, like, a lot of these films, but, like, I still love him. Yeah, dude, I'll eat that up. Yeah. I love, I love just him playing himself. And, like, I don't know if it's a hot take, but Anchorman 2, not bad. It was, like, okay. I don't really remember that one. It was all right. I just remember the scene of all the... All the people fighting. fighting. Yeah. Oh, I do Kanye, remember that. Yeah. yeah. Smith. So funny. Yeah. Okay. The Minotaur. Yeah. I think it was tough because it had to live up to the first one. The first one was just like a certified classic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was like fine, but like. It like one upped it to the point where it was like a little cringy. Yeah. But like I also expected the whole movie to be a little cringy. Right. You know? Right. It just like didn't age well overall. But like, or Anchorman 1, I feel actually aged surprisingly well. Yeah. Overall. Because it almost feels like a period piece. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of humor that has not aged well. I, I sometimes like catch like older comedy movies specifically. And oh yeah, totally. So uh, some of that stuff does not when fucking fly. When it gets fly. in the Twitter roundup, you're it's like, such ah, a, yeah, it's yeah. A goner. Like it's still wild to me because like I think that Tropic Thunder is like one of the funniest movies I've ever seen like during its time. But then Robert Downey Jr. being a black man. Like even if it was kind well, of he was doing blackface. Yeah, he was doing blackface. But that was like the whole joke. Yeah, so that was the like, whole joke. But I was like, I understand that they're trying to like play into it, but yeah. it's like this still feels wildly inappropriate. I thought it. I thought it was fine. I thought okay, it was you fun. know what? I I thought it was hilarious. Now, on the other hand, one of my <laughs> other favorite movies mm-hmm. does not age well, but it's still hilarious. Uh, Ace Ventura. Oh, oh yeah. wait, I'm yeah. trying to recall what, yeah. what scene the first specifically. One? Oh, what? the first one. Yeah. Oh, right. Because like Binkle that. Binkle Zeinhorn. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, the what? So the primary antagonist was, uh, I guess, would, would so, you say like a trend? Well, no, no. Yeah. The hmm. it was a football player who disguised himself, um, and as the police chief. Right. Yeah. So not actually a trans man. I forget, dude, I forget what like the I forget what like the how they kind of framed it. No, not like how they framed it though. Yeah, but like again, a lot of but yeah, dated very stuff, very insensitive, very poorly to, aged stuff for yeah. sure. Like they basically the the actress I think was a woman. Yeah, and she was in uh, a Blade Runner. Yeah. yeah, the original. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I think the like the the gotcha moment was like they turned her around, and she uh, it showed that she was like tucking. So it was kind of, you know, it's just like not a very deft handling of like Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But that's what I mean in terms of like, there are some comedies that are well respected that it's like, oh, today. Yeah, definitely wouldn't fly if it released today. I think Austin Powers 2 is a pretty, I think that held up really well, actually. Did it? I think so. Maybe not. I mean, there. Don't quote me on that. I'm scared. I'm scared to go back and watch some of these movies. I just just watched Goldmember. Okay. No, it was funny, but there was there like some, some, some things here and there, but it like not so much. Okay. Like you could still hold up. Okay. Yeah. I 
I bet you. The, I mean, the love guru never held. I up. mean, outside of outside of the beginning with like Kevin Spacey. Oh my God! Right, Fuck. where they do the intro with all the actors, yeah. like Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah, is, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And so he was Doctor Evil, Kevin Spacey. What mm. kind of fits, right? I remember weirdly. <laughs> welcome. Oh, what is it? Welcome the Zohan. What is it called? Don't mm-hmm. mess with the Zohan. Don't mess with the Zohan. Yeah. Is that Ben Stiller? Ben no, Adam. Stiller. I Adam never Stiller. saw the movie, but I had the poster Adam in Adam Sandler. Room. Adam yeah. Sandler. Yeah. 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 It was the only poster in my room for like my childhood. Why? And you didn't I, see the movie? I never got. My dad got it for free <laughs> at a theater, and I I didn't have any other posters, just that. But the poster was Adam Sandler, like lifting his entire leg up in like super skinny, short jeans, I guess jorts. Yeah. Um. So you just had Adam Sandler. I package. fell asleep to that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I, that was like a that was like the crux of your your childhood right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. That's all I remember. That's really good. Do you I, have any? I had a giant uh, from Blockbuster. Uh-huh. They had those big window stickers. Oh yeah. So my we we would go in and be like, because the, the posters and things would be up for like a week or two, mm-hmm. and the movie's old. Be like, hey, can I can I have that? It's like, okay. <laughs> and you just wow. give them to me. But I had this giant coming soon thing stuck on my window, so I actually lost my view. I couldn't see out it, but I knew that it was coming soon. <laughs> That's what I looked That's up beautiful. to. Nice. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Great. I don't think I ever had any posters in my room ever. Is that depressing? No, it's very minimalist of you. You were ahead of your time. I wow. guess. Yeah. I had no, yeah, I just had no fucking posters. That's very cool. But I yeah. can't remember if it was because, like, it was, like, a choice because, like, I didn't want posters or if it's, like, something my parents would just didn't allow me to have. Were your parents very strict? I don't, but the thing is, I don't recall them necessarily. They were strict, but, like, not for stuff like that, I don't yeah. think. Like, take Did that Beyblade poster off your yeah. wall. You guys play Beyblades? It did. Of I had the plastic arena. And in my mind, all the memories I have of Beyblades are like f- crazy battles and us at the schoolyard and doing that. But it was just, you know, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Well, I had a Chinese knockoff that was made of pure steel. What the? <laughs> Would your Beyblade like destroy the <laughs> arena itself? What the fuck? Yes, yes. I was banned from playing with the other kids. Wow, <laughs> I can see that shit like actually breaking apart the other tops, right? Yeah, no, I. That's what happened. Was uh, well, I had asked because like Beyblades were like the trendy thing, and then I asked my parents like, yeah, can I have a Beyblade? And my mom was, I think, visiting our grandma in Chinatown, and uh, like, oh, Beyblade, yeah, Broden asked about this, so she buys it, but it's like, yeah, Chinese knockoff. That's just like. <gasps> Wait, so it, the knockoff was better? Yeah. Yeah, it was heavy. <laughs> and it was like, it was it hurt to pick up if it wasn't done spinning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like slash the fucking flesh yeah. off your fingers? Like you just have to <sighs> let it do its thing, and then it calms down and you pick it up. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, the first time I actually played with Beyblades was honestly, like, I think last year when Cutie, or was it Ludwig? Whose it, event was it? Was it Cuties, yeah. Yeah, when Cutie had the Beyblade tournament. Yeah. That was the first time I ever- There was a Beyblade ever, tournament? Yeah, yeah was, that was the first no time way. I ever baited a blade. Yeah. Did you like it as an adult? Pretty underwhelming. Yeah. I would say the most fun part of Beyblades was like assembling the Beyblade. Totally. Because yeah. aren't they interchangeable? Yeah. They're mm-hmm. like, I think it's like composed of like three to four parts or something like that. Right. Like the the weight, like the the part the top spins on, and like the the other top part that like the majority of the actual top yeah. itself. The blade ring. It's very technical. Right. Yeah. There's stats. Would you were you able to adjust yours, or was it just one solid like stone brick? My original one? Yeah. No adjustment. No adjustment. <laughs> Came as is. Yeah. No instructions. Just it's just kill. one solid piece. Yeah. yeah. It was just like a cube of metal and then like a little point for it to spin on. Yeah, pretty much. Holy fuck. It's like for Chinese military use only. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually what they used on the tips of their rockets. So, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool, man. Let it rip. Yeah. Let it rip. Let it rip. Just rip up the whole stage. <laughs> God. Um, I know that we were talking earlier about how you played one specific game mostly, and yeah. it was Overwatch. Yes. And this was the news, Broden, that I was going to share with you that you had not heard yet, mm-hmm. and I wanted to get your take on this. You remember how Overwatch 2 was pitched as a game that was going to be like kind of like a graphical uplift of Overwatch 1 in combination with like a PvE mode? Oh, yeah. It's going to change the world. Yeah. Uh, there's no more <laughs> PvE mode. They are scrapping it. So... What you're saying is Overwatch 2 really is just Overwatch 1 again. Yes. Maybe the real Overwatch 2 was one we made along the way. <laughs> no, because they basically halted <laughs> development on Overwatch 1 for like 
three to four yeah, fucking to four years. years for that specifically. For that, yeah. yeah. And so now they're like, no, instead we're going to drip like story missions. Yeah, kind of so like how they've already been doing. Passes. I'm not playing. Yeah, so I, I think that's ex so. already what they were doing, right? They like, already had like story mission stuff. They just released one uh, a couple weeks ago. And, Star Watch? Yeah, Star Watch. Yeah. But a lot of people's sentiment is like very like, eh, it's like you do it once and then you're over it. Like these were like highly replayable and all of this. And everybody was like, why the fuck did we wait three and a half years? Yeah. So people are pissed. Yeah, people are fucking pissed. Like, I. I personally didn't really care too much. I actually went to BlizzCon 2019 with some friends, mm. and uh, one of my friends actually fell asleep during the Overwatch 2 beta, or like the the play test that they had there for the PVE mode. Like he, wow. because we were just like kind of locked into this like one 20 minute long mission. Yeah, and it was like just, it was just like a stretched out version of Junkenstein's Revenge. Mm -hmm. Like you're just like mm -hmm. fighting through waves of bot enemies that aren't like particularly interesting and the upgrades like the trait upgrade trees that you would try out were like oh as tracer you get one additional dash or like one additional rewind two sticky bombs yeah no they really <laughs> no they, they don't touch the old the old too never, strong <laughs> no yeah they i was just like yeah this is kind of like whatever so like when they announced that Overwatch 2 was focused on the PVE mode i was just like Okay, like yeah. I guess I mean I'm sure I have a feeling like they were planning and it was something from above. Yeah. They were like, nah, let's just keep these like battle passes like going. Like the and shop stuff. was earning because it so even much money seems like the way that developers were talking about it that like it sucked for them to do that and it didn't seem like it was from them mm. because there's no way they were show they had all those like gameplays like we get dynamic weather and all this type of stuff. I was like, there's no way that. You know, yeah. I someone on the Overwatch subreddit, someone took the original trailer for Overwatch 2, but cut it down to what is actually in the game. <laughs> and it's like, I think the trailer is like reduced by like 75%. <laughs> so, That's like, awesome. the trailers just shows like skins, yeah, and like a few of the new characters. Which is essentially, and that's it. Yeah. I, I blame Activision after Call of Duty because Call of Duty, they just like, all right, each year we need a new one. Pump out a sequel. I feel like they were mm. like, "Hey Blizzard, what's? I think we need a second Overwatch." And then they're like, "Okay, well we're working on this thing. No, 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 no. Just do the first one again, but kind of change it a little bit and add a battle pass." I kind of think that pass. like I'm a sucker for battle. I don't I know. know, man. I know. Dude, me, the moment I'm they added battle... on it, but I, I, I was I like, love I, cosmetics. I fucking, I, love, I fucking yeah. love cosmetics, and I will say that each of the mythic skins that they released for Overwatch Two have been really cool. Yeah, they've been really cool. Like, I like the idea that they have like little like different yeah. animations in it and stuff. Yeah. yeah, but I will also say that this is a game where you never see your own actual character, other than their arms. So it's kind of like, I'm trying to think. No, of no, the no. Game play the game. Does. You see it all the time. Yeah, at least I do. I don't know about and you, but stuff. yeah, I, mm. I feel like you see it more than others. The game like, uh, like Cyberpunk. So like oh, cyberpunk, yeah. you like upgrade your stuff, you never see it, and you could only wear certain clothes if you wanted to be strong. So like the huh. dope fucking outfit, but like all my stats suck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm sure there's like a mod that allows you to like... I'm sure. I'm sure. But yeah, Overwatch, I don't know. They're really good with their cosmetic game at least. Speaking yeah. of skins though, and bad cosmetics, Moira. What are you guys doing with oh, Moira? Yeah. Hey, they released we gotta some. Talk about I do like the witch one. There's, But it's the, not out yet. Which... The uh the like wicked witch looking thing. The newest one that's coming out. Yeah, the newest one. But that's it's not like out. better. It's a step in the right direction. Wait, is it step in the right direction? For a different one that looked cool. I think. I forgot what it was you called. You know that. who has too many skins? Who? Literally. Genji yeah. Has too many skins. Genji, yeah. Tracer, uh, Mercy. Well, too, actually, too many cool skins. Tracer is like too many cool skins. Yet, but yeah. yeah. Like Genji's Genji's character, we're like, I have six to pick from, and I'd be like, damn, these are all so. Yeah, sick. they're all really cool. Yeah. And then they're I look really at more, and it's like, I can be the ghost. That's about it. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. Spooky, yeah. Wo Spooky Woman won. Her skins are pretty bad. Like the fact that like my favorite of her skins is like Talon, like the the one. Oh, the, like, with the, that with the beret. With yeah. the beret, it's like, but it's like. Well, and she has like one of the worst gold weapons too. It's literally it's like, like, oh, like her like, nails. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. wristband. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh yeah, they added it because it was so bad. It was just the nails that then they added a little bit of the wrist. Yeah. And that wrist really Ooh. solved. That well, wrist honestly, solved I think that's just because like fuck Moira players. So that's the, that's how we yeah, balance he didn't, it. He didn't mean that. Hey, you, you didn't mean fuck that. Fuck right? other Moira players. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Outside outside this room. Yeah. 
Because you're you're a good Moira player. I'm Everyone else is cringe. I'm the best Moira player. Yes, you're the best Moira player. He's the best. I'm like, heal me. He's like, I'm doing damage, actually. <laughs> 12,000 oh, heals. Actually, I do need two uh, healers. There's a reason so why we have two healers. Yeah. Okay. Talk to the mercy. Yeah. Actually. I'm pumping damage, baby. That's how I heal. Hey, I got gold damage and healing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> 36 and 4. This is why I hate playing Overwatch. It's like, I don't give a fuck what you're saying. Look at my stats, bitch. <clears throat> yeah. God. Are you playing anything else right now? Right now, I am focusing on more like single player games. I started playing Zelda. Tears <laughs> you of the essentially Kingdom. said I'm focusing on myself. <laughs> oh no, basically, yeah. <laughs> it's just like I think multiplayer games are really fun, but I've been f having less fun playing the specific multiplayer games that our friends play a lot of. Nice. Like I like Valorant. So sorry. I I like Valorant, but I think I've been having less enjoyment playing Valorant. I think mostly because I feel like in terms of skill level, I peaked. Like I don't feel myself getting better at the what game. What are you What are you at? At like Ascendant. Oh my god. Ish. But I feel like I I just I am not willing to put in the amount of time in that game that it would require for me to like actually improve in that game. Yeah. And I don't know if like putting that much time into that game would make me happy in the way like it maybe makes like Jody or John happy, you know? Mm. Um so I've just been trying to kind of like branch out to other games. I've been playing more single player games. I've been discovering like more indie games. Nice. Uh there's I will never fucking remember any of the games that I play, but there's like one game that's very similar to Slay the Spire that came out recently. It's like Frost something. Wild Frost. Wild Frost. Wild yeah. Frost. I've been wanting to get into that. I've been playing that. That was pretty fun. I'm really bad at it. I've never beat it yet. I saw I had mixed reactions on Steam. Is there a reason? I don't know. Is it I, good? I, I, I'm having fun with it. Okay. I is will it, what, what kind of, is it like a... It's a deck builder, del, ugh, deck building roguelite. So it's oh, like run based. Cool. You build a deck similar to... Um, it's like the spire. You choose like routes, nice, and you try to kill the boss. Essentially, I tried so, super fun. So uh, it's cool because there's like more of like a squad mechanic to it because you could have cards that are units and then you like put them on the board. Mm -hmm. You're basically your life is like your your main character, and that character dies, you're done with mm -hmm. your run. But then like you could have like other units and you stuff. You can kill off your boys. Yeah, you can kill off your boys. But nice. there's like there's like penalties. Like if they die die in like one round, then they'll start the next uh like fight with like half health, like half mm -hmm. stats. So that's cool, but it's fun. It I, I I like it. Cool. I I'm just like looking for other games to play at this point, though. Honestly, nice. We played a little bit of Sunhaven. That was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah but I fun. think we did fall off of it a little bit, but like it was it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. It was kind of like a Maple Story, Harvest Moon. Mix. Oh my gosh, yeah. I loved Harvest Moon. Yeah, very RPG. F like a lot of RPG elements, though. Like the more you do something, the more you like raise your experience points and levels in that something, and then like there's like a there's like an RPG style like skill tree and stuff mm, so more addicting it is yeah and it's like eight player lobbies which is like i think the biggest draw there are yeah. so few games where it's like not pvp focus where you could play in a, like a larger group totally i feel like that happens with me with valorant a lot it's like oh we have five slots open people are you the sixth man i i um i'm okay being the sixth man right <laughs> uh, everyone's kind of got a little six man in them yeah i'm a little six man right? I, I feel that I'm, a little, I got a I'm really I'm so bad at Valorant. Brian's been trying to teach me, and he'll like watch me as I'm attempt to play Omen. Um, it's a game I really want to get good at, just for like the social aspect of it. Yeah, he he's a player where I think he'd like Yoru. He likes to do those tricks where it's like, like, just fucking with their brain. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. 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 There aren't many characters that could like kind of fuck with other players in the way that Yoru can. I think. Yeah. Who else can like maybe sure. Omen? No. I like Omen because I can just like. Teleport. I, yeah. I'm a Reaper man in Overwatch. Oh yeah. That's why. I was gonna say you sounded like a Sombra. I kind of look I kind of look like a Sombra. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you got a little bit of it in your voice. Yeah. You know? Oh, a little uh a little uh if <laughs> 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 they are, spice. They are apparently reworking two characters in Overwatch, Sombra being one of them. I forgot who they Roadhog. 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 Yeah. But that's not until like they said season seven beyond. Isn't that like they've been talking shit. about Roadhog for like three seasons? Yeah, well, the thing they've is, been yapping. They're kind of yapping. fucked though because Roadhog quintessentially is a character that hooks characters in and kills mm -hmm. them, yeah. but then that is what makes him unfun for other people. So it's well, like, he can't really one shot you anymore. But but then even so, but that feels still. unsatisfying now yes. as a Roadhog yeah. player. So it's a little yeah. bit both. So it's kind of like how do you balance Roadhog then? You know, you, they're gonna you, Doomfist him. Well, they're, I think Doomfist is actually really good again. No, yeah. no. Well, oh, no. yeah. If you, you, if you see you how they kill someone oh, yeah. with you see one what they've punch? done with my boy and all of his characters. They made a one punch man skin, and you cannot kill with one punch. Like it doesn't. Well, if there's an edge. Uh. <laughs> uh. 
Do, uh, do you I work still, for Blizzard? I still find like <laughs> no, real, really good Doomfist players are like fucking unbearable though. So like who? Doomfist players, like really good one. Doomfist yeah. players. Oh yeah, really good ones. Yeah. But that's the problem is like now we just have to be annoying. Like it used to be like you go in kill, kill, kill. Now you're like, hey, hey look at me. Don't look at my teammates. Okay, I'm gonna run away. But I mean, that's, that's like you yeah. see. You're bad for balance. <laughs> you hear that? Yeah, like true. every character needs to be capable of like doing like one shot kills essentially for it to be balanced. If there's only like one or two characters that could just like go in and kill everyone super easily, like what the fuck? Well, that's is that's why doing? everyone hates like Widowmaker. Yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, uh, actually, in the April Fools update, I actually really like the way like she can't one shot kill, but there's like a little bit of poison mm -hmm. at the end of it, so you like headshot. Doesn't kill them, oh. but they get. T -t -t -t. Mm -hmm. No, so it still kills them, but they have a chance to counter. That's, that's a nice. fun. That's yeah. a fun April Fools. It's like, look what you could have had. That's what everybody April was thinking. Fools. Like some of these April Fools, yeah. and then they just take it away. Yeah, they, they're like on. I wish you could play old like patches. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. That'd be really cool in like yeah. an arcade. Bastion with a shield. Yeah, Bastion with the shield. Bastion God, I remember <laughs> when the game first came out, and there weren't like. Roll restrictions and like hero restrictions, so people would just go like six divas, yeah, six oh symmetras, goats, yeah. goats meta. Yeah, oh, that's, that's the fucking stuff. worst. God, I don't know. When Overwatch first came out, that was genuinely some of the most fun I've had in gaming for yeah. like, yeah, like six months. I think nobody yeah. knew what to it do. It was great. I associate it with just being in college and yeah. just mm. not having a care in the world. Yeah. Being like today, I'm gonna wake up and play Overwatch. Yeah, <laughs> and this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, and it was great. It was and good. like. Yeah. The thing is, that game also looked really good on, like, not great machines, mm -hmm. which is what well, I think optimized. was really big. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Fuck. God. Blizzard! Blizzard. I'm looking forward to Diablo 4, though, for what it's worth. Oh, yeah. Did you pre You've been playing the betas? I've been playing the betas, yeah. They're, they've been fun. I've been enjoying it. It mm -hmm. looks like... Diablo 4 feels like the game I think Diablo 2 fans wanted out of Diablo 3, overall. Mm. I'm sure that there are some things that, like, they still don't like. I heard like there's a lot of kerfluffle. Like people don't like seeing other players in the overworld and stuff. But like I don't think that shit's that, that big of a deal. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. Seeing other players. There's like events, like boss events that you could like kind of group up for and like fight That's together awesome. and stuff like that. Did so. you play the beta too? Yeah. Yeah. If you play the beta, you get a wolf pup companion. Well, like not companion, Ooh. but it's like a cosmetic of a puppy sleeping on your back. I'll do it. I'm a sucker for like limited edition items. Dude, fucking same. Both like digital and like physical. Yeah. It hurts me. I'm such a fucking collector. I hate That's what gets me, man. Like, I will spend so much money on games just because I, I'm, I'm susceptible to FOMO. Totally. Like, I am exactly the target audience of these fucking games. Of like these Monster fucking... Hunter? Well, Monster Hunter, not really, actually. You sure. bought a lot of copies of that game. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Did I buy you a copy of Monster Hunter, Broden? I feel like you have, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did you? You're like Keanu Reeves in motorcycles. You're just like, yeah, yeah. You should have one too. You should, yeah. You'll really enjoy this. Yeah. You'll just sign the box too. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, you didn't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <Fucking damn it. laughs> oh. Do you guys have a game that you fucking love, but you can't get other people to get uh, to get to play? That's a great question. <laughs> Honestly, Overwatch. <laughs> 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 I feel like no one wants to play Overwatch with me anymore. I feel like I'm the guy in the friend group, like holding on to something that sh should have been let go a long time ago. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, we'll get on, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Julian, you're on tonight. All right. Sure. We'll queue up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me just update. Yeah. I mean, at least I'll like try and play sometimes, right? When yeah, I bring a Monster yeah. Hunter, people just laugh in my face. <laughs> They're like, ha! Remember when you spent all that money and no one still plays it? Is that crazy? Anyway, let's play Valorant. And I'm like, fuck. I never played Monster Hunter. Okay, are you just saying that to like hurt me now? No, no. I played the Monster Hunter for the Wii. You know what? Way back when. I'll take it. At least you tried. So I'm a real fan. I was like... <laughs> Do you remember what weapon you used? No. Fuck. I have no idea. <laughs> Fuck. No idea. That game has like the worst onboarding of any game I've ever played. Like, it is like, hey. Okay. That's it. That's the whole introduction. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, oh, there's like, I don't, where do I get weapons? Oh, I like search every chest and this one just happens to have one of every weapon in the game. Oh, but they're all like shitty. Okay. But mm. like, how do I get better weapons? How do I accept quests? Like, where do I go? Okay. I'm on a quest. Where's the monster? It won't tell me where the monster is. I just have to find him. So mm. it's like, it doesn't explain shit to you. Yeah. I, there are a lot of items in that game still that I'm just like, yeah, I don't know how to use it. Never was explained to me. Never bothered looking it up. And so I just don't use it. 
they're just hoping people will buy the the game guide at Toys R Us. Mm. Oh my god, yeah, those are the days. Yeah, you, ever, you guys ever own like uh, consoles or like handhelds? Of course. Yeah. What was your What was your first one? My first ever one was a Game Boy Color that my mom got for me. A we'll purple color, one. Purple. We'll say, wait, we'll color. We'll say on the count of three. One, two, three. Purple. purple. Wait, why is everyone's purple? Nope, not mine. Wasn't that? Was like, yours like Glacier? Limited edition gold Pikachu. I hate this. Oh, oh, oh shut this up. That was the one like in conjunction with the Pokemon Yellow, right? Yeah. 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 Did, you thought, have, did you have Did you have the Pokemon the, the, the pet? Purple was yeah. the, the one. Pokemon Yellow one, pet yeah. thing, the Tamagotchi? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I had that. I had that because we were going on a trip to Disneyland <laughs> as a kid. You've told me about this. And we went to Toys R Us for the road trip because my parents were like, it's going to be a long drive. You can get whatever you want. Um, and so I pick out a Game Boy and a game. And they're like, we can't afford the Game Boy, but you can get the game. And I was like, you don't understand <laughs> how this works. <laughs> and I was like four years old. Um, so I got the Pikachu version, which the whole thing is like you walk with a Pikachu. Yeah, so it's a pedometer. So like I was in the car. I was in the car for six hours. Yeah. You didn't do this? No, I... I definitely did that. I'm just like, yeah. I'm a fucking champion at this. I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll do two and <laughs> one in each hand. <laughs> So I'm just gonna watch this muted. It's like, <laughs> yeah, stick your tongue out. It's like that fucking. <laughs> it's like that. It's like that Bobby Lee skit from yeah. SNL, the yes. Dragon Slayer, yes. Goblin yeah. Slayer. <laughs> You're drinking the blood. You're drinking the blood. I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Everyone's waiting. like, yeah, yeah, do I'm the one. Do more. Do more. Fuck you. Is it a common thing for people to just like take whatever you do on the podcast and make something out of it? Yeah. Well, I mean, we have our TikTok editors that will sometimes oh, nice. clip mm -hmm. parts of it. So the real enemy is the ones inside. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Actually. I see. Yeah. Well, I'll never live down the Bobby Lee allegations. People keep saying that me, they have never seen me and Bobby Lee in the same room before. And really? I'm like, I don't know what to, explain. I don't know what to tell That's them. That's true. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I've actually, yeah, now that you say that. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> is Bobby Lee all over your TikTok at all? No, it's not. But after this, probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every now and then I see like Tiger Belly clips. Oh, okay. But yeah. I do, I, f I heard that he's kind of in hot water, or I feel like he had a recent controversy, I want to hmm. say. Like something about like. He's a man where I expect controversy. Yeah, yeah. I want to say he has like a story about like a Mexican prostitute, something like that. Uh huh. That seems safe. And then I. <laughs> and then I think, th uh, okay. I might be wrong here. I might be misremembering. I want to say that he has a story about like an underage Mexican prostitute, and then like when he has like when people are like, "Hey, you, what the fuck is the story?" He says like, "I lied. That was an mm. embellishment. Like I mm. made up a story." Tijuana prostitution story. It's not real. Yeah, that's so. No. That's what Bobby Lee says is like I embellished it. It's a lie. It's just like a funny story I made up. Mm. But then like you know now it's like okay, but that's like kind of a gross story to make up. Yeah. But yeah. also people are like okay, but what if it's like not a story? Yeah. Can you yeah. look up the population of Japan while you're at it? Yes, yeah. actually, yeah, like the yeah. can you get like the the decline, the percentages? Yeah. We need that. And is the Japanese rail pass worth it if you're visiting? Oh, yeah. also yeah. Oh, we are going to Japan soon or in Korea. Oh, is that so something jealous. that I've kind of been talking openly about? It. I, I think just, people have been talking about it. Yeah. I don't think I said who I was going with, just in case they didn't talk about it yet. Just me and you. Is this a Yo. leisure trip? Is this like a work trip? What is it? Work trip overall. I think the initial reason why we're going is for VCT Japan. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, all right. But then we were thinking like, brush up. Yeah. <sighs> I'll be ready. Yeah. We were thinking like, oh, like, you know, if we're gonna be in the area, why don't we hit up Korea? So yeah. we're going to Korea for a week oh, and then Japan so for two fun. weeks. Yeah. And honestly, like since I've come back. From Japan, like in January, all I could think about is going back to Japan. Like Japan is a place I would go to once a year. Yeah, totally. Even more if I could. Oh, even more even if more. I could. Would you live there? That's hard because That's there is that whole meme where it's like living there is yeah. like glum, terrible, awful, just the worst things you could oh, imagine. Is it really? But no, no, like just in general, like oh, any yeah. place visiting there is always like more glamorized than living there. Totally. So I'm imagining that Japan is probably similar in that regard. But uh, there's so many conveniences yeah. that are associated with living in Japan that I'm thinking like, okay, but like, I'm sure like there are a lot of awful things about living in Japan, but like, I think I would still very much enjoy my time living there. We should just live there for a month and find out. Yeah. I don't think that's, would you say staying somewhere for a month is considered living there? I think after three weeks, you've got a good sense of what it's like. What's the legal amount of time you can live? Isn't there like a few month thing? I don't know. Like until they deport you? Until, kind of yeah. I don't know what it is for Japan. I think it's different for every country. If they force, okay, if yeah, Japan has to like deport you, 
If Japan uh, has to deport you, are you like in trouble now, or are you like okay, you could like fly back after you go back to the U.S.? It I seems like be... the place where they're like, hey, don't do it again. Yeah. I don't know. I think they can be kind of. You think they'd be a little? Yeah. I can see that. Any word, Wex? Uh, for all three, population I've... of Japan. oh shit, we were joking <laughs> oh about God. that. No, 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 I want 120, 124 million. Okay, uh, and it's been declining like half a mil. Oh That's damn. Right. Also, 90 days. So go visit, but right around the 90 day mark. Uh, oh, I was oh. like, what? When, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, every single no, time no. you're feeding me something, I'm, you know, Dude, we're you're eating. On it. You're we're on eating it. 90 days. All right, we could live in well, Japan for I, three I months. I hope they yeah. pay you a billion dollars. <laughs> I quite. wonder what... 90 days, but um, then you have to have, like, a visa for that. Got it. And some people try to circumvent it by, like, you know, 80 days, I'll go over to, like, Korea Guam or, or Korea and then come oh. back, and then you kind of show up on their radar. Come back with a mustache? To like re- yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you get in trouble. I wonder if you wanted to stay there for longer. Would you just, like, like send an application to the Japanese government or something? Like, hey, I want to stay here for, like, six months or something because i know i'm sure but that's like a visa like that's oh, yeah. you okay. if you were to get that then yeah you can stay longer but if you're going as a tourist yeah, yeah they're yeah. like around Three the 80 months. 90 day mark then they're like okay so <laughs> what's going on <laughs> yeah okay. what is it you're yeah. like shopping yeah. in a store Sorry. they're like you sure i can't help yeah. you out with anything yeah. <laughs> but you've been in there for like three hours it's like <laughs> <laughs> okay honestly staying in japan for three months sounds appealing that sounds yeah. like the time that sounds like life. something i would like to do in my lifetime yeah what's stopping you um, having a girlfriend with a nine to five, like Monday to Friday job. Just so move her out there with you. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, that's like, she can't do that. So, um, I mean, if she could, that would be fucking awesome. And I think she would even be open to it as well. Cause she also loves Japan. Oh, so there we go. Yeah, that's awesome. Make it happen, Congrats. Congrats. Would that you guys? So cool. I, I would love to. Three months? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. If no? my lifestyle could accommodate for that, I would, that'd be a dream scenario. Okay. Yeah. Would you try to learn the language? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I think wouldn't. I think I would just be that guy. <laughs> oh, you would you would, really. Sorry. Speak English to me. You can't I'm say American. that in another country. Yeah. I, I'm totally kidding. I'm sorry. I know. I'm, he's little, not I know. kidding. He's done this before. No, I <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stop slandering my name. Um Do you know any Japanese? Very, very fucking little. Sumimasen, Tode wa doko desu ka? Okay, yeah. whatever. He's ready to move. Yeah, I can ask how where's the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, what was the bathroom? What's the word for bathroom? Toilet. Toilet? Which I think is toilet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I get right to the point. I don't even want to go to the bathroom. I just want the toilet. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. For 90 days. That's just what he's yeah. going to say. Yeah. For <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. This man just keeps wanting to go to the bathroom. He's like open conversations with like girls <laughs> at the bar. Sumasen. Toilet was Okay, actually, I think I've talked about this on the pod before, but it's just like one of my pet peeves, it's so dumb, is that I hate running into other travelers in Japan. I think we've talked about this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. The people don't respect the, you know, if you're in Japan, you want to, like, when you're eating, you're supposed to, like, not be, like, walking or yeah. not. Or they treat it like it's Vegas. Yeah. Like when they go to Tokyo and oh, Americans yeah. just drink and like, they're, they're just, like, fucking loud and obnoxious yeah. and shit or, like, very rude to, and like, you, what are, like, very kind and respectful, like, staff. Yeah. It is true. When I'm in Japan, I get very xenophobic. Yeah. For for other non-Japanese people. But mm-hmm. also, sometimes they're not even being rude. They're just existing. Like, ugh. I know. I'm like, what are you doing? This here? is my trip. I thought yeah, there was only one here. group of Americans allowed in this establishment at a time. <laughs> yeah. You're ruining. Like, what is this? I might as well be in myself. L.A. right yeah. now. What the fuck is this? I paid a thousand dollars for a plane ticket. I better not see you here. <laughs> <Yeah. ever again. laughs> I did a matcha tea ceremony in uh, Japan. That sounds awesome. Last, it was really cool. But we were with a bunch of other Americans trying to do it, and she was presenting how to do it correctly, and you eat the mochi with the matcha. And she was like, do you know what this is? This is, this is we call this mochi. And then this woman in the back of us was like, oh yeah, I know what that is. We get that at the Whole Foods. And she was like, <laughs> and she was, you would have you thought someone died. <laughs> she was heartbroken. She's like, that is not mochi. That kills me inside. Yeah. That fucking uh, kills, oh my God. Very tough. You know, I've been seeing a lot of like TikToks for like tips on traveling in Japan. And, bro, like, oh, it's just, like, the same fucking thing over and over again. It's like, hey, make sure to get the subway card. It's really convenient for getting around. It's like, 
No fucking shit. Like, yeah. Make sure to eat the convenience store food because it's actually good. It's the same fucking like three or four tips all the time. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, bro, just I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking lose it. And you're looking for the advanced tips. Yeah, I want the actual advanced tips. But I'm scared because like when I see advanced tips and like it has like nine hundred thousand likes, I'm like, okay, well, this is no longer an advanced tip. Everyone's gonna fucking mm -hmm. do this shit. Yeah. Right. You know? Do you know any advanced tips? Uh, there's like certain apps you could download for like free Wi-Fi that's oh. accessible like throughout mm -hmm. Japan. Like getting a rail card. Like now the people, everyone knows to get a subway card. It's like, but did you know you should get a rail card as well? You mm -hmm. know? Um, there's like I saw a tip saying like, oh, like search for food using Japanese, not in English. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. That's a that's smart. One. Yeah. Very but there smart. was actually one. T I think. Also, don't expect five stars. Yes. Also, don't expect. Don't five expect stars. five yeah. stars. Like Got three, it. three point five to four is like incredible. Okay, I didn't know about that one. Yeah. Um, I think Broden and I saw this TikTok separately, but it was like there was someone suggesting like, oh, there's like this myth where you're not supposed to walk and eat in Japan. I walk and eat in Japan all the time, and then it's, there's like the, it's like an American woman saying this, and I'm like, there's like ten people behind him picking up the trash. <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely was like, wait, when I was in Japan, I didn't see anyone walking and eating like everyone no. would like wherever they gra got their food mm -hmm. from they would eat in front of that store and then yeah. throw away their trash at that store and yep. then leave or they would like pack up their I trash mm -hmm. and like so have cool. it on them but yeah. like i never ever once saw anyone walking and eating even when it was like at like i would be i was in kyoto for new year's and there was like a lot of like the food stalls it was like it was kind of like a festival-ish vibe so like you would think that people are still like walking and eating Still didn't see a single fucking person walking and eating there. It was like people would like sit on benches, eat their food, and then still like to throw their food away at that local stall. Yeah. Ugh. I will say though, like I did see a very belligerent Japanese, like drunk belligerent Japanese man try to fight another group. And I was like, I was like, whoa, holy shit. This is like the most like. Yeah, that's cool. That that's was awesome. tactical. Yeah, because yeah. like yeah. everyone like, generally was like kind of quiet, polite, you know, like keeping to themselves. But this guy's like. I can't speak Japanese, but like he ended every sentence with like, Bleh! like that. You know Whoa. what I mean? Like he was yeah. like, Bleh! like he was ending every sentence like that. <laughs> Which and in like, Japanese means I'm gonna kill you. Yes, yeah. basically. And he was he would like launch himself at this other group trying to fuck this other dude up. And like there's constantly like people like breaking them up and shit. And like it was funny because like he was trying to find a way to like kind of like discreetly like walk around the group that's trying to stop him. <laughs> from like like oh yeah I'm gonna walk in. and then he would like start <laughs> dashing <laughs> towards the other crew like just booking it and like his friends had to keep like tackling him and like grabbing him before yeah it was I feel he, like that guy knows all the advanced tips of Japan yeah, yeah. probably that was like the most uncharacteristic uncharacteristically like la or I guess like it was like the biggest commotion that I saw in Japan mm. like it was something that I feel like I probably could have seen in america and like not like america's like everyone's like fucking fighting each other all the time or some shit but it's like if it happens in america it's like okay they're like not super unexpected but in japan it was like super unexpected for me so yeah, yeah. yeah i've never seen a fight in japan ever yeah yeah that was my, the one and only fight that i saw i did see a lot of drunk salarymen like sleeping on the ground on the yes. weekends yeah that's super that. common yeah I, what is it it's the weekdays too you no know, you're like supposed to you're supposed to like drink. go out with your boss or your, like your coworkers and drink. It's like a, yeah. It's like work after work in a way. Yeah. Um, like work etiquette is if your boss invites you out to go drinking, you go drinking. Mm. Yeah. There's also there was a clip of on I saw on live stream fail of this guy who was live streaming in Japan and he was getting onto the subway, and as the subway door opens, this guy literally fucking crawls out of the subway <laughs> like on all fours because he's so fucking wasted, but like. The streamer's like, oh, what the fuck? And but he notices that the drunk guy like left his jacket and his phone in the subway. So he like grabbed it for him and like gave it to him as he like just like literally collapsed on the side of the subway. Yeah. So I was just like, and everyone else on the subway was just like on their phones, not giving a fuck. It's just normal. Yeah. yeah. Like, everyone minds their own business. Just another day. Yeah, just another day. So all right. I we were already. Yeah, we're run good. through the throwing through the time. That was oh, yeah? super fast. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I don't want to stop talking. I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Julian, Broden, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you so much for having me. Any projects, anything you want to promote? I know you have the, the song dropping soon. Yeah. Should have could have dropped it Sunday. Probably 26. dropped by now. Yeah. This will yeah. Be oh like nice. Two weeks. Probably dropped. Yeah. yeah. I wonder weeks. what future us is thinking. That's crazy. Oh, fuck this podcast. I wish I didn't show up. It sucks. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> we're wa- yeah, we're watching it. Yeah, we're like, oh, God. Uh, not a good look, guys. Not a good look. Not, not a good first temp love. It's of, like half controversial appearance. topics. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, dude, thanks for having us. No, shoulda, coulda. Drop yeah. in May 26th. Cool. It's or not dropped. out already. Yeah. Hope you like it. If you don't like it, where can we find Sue, it? Sue Peter. On everything. Wait, whoa. What? <laughs> not me. No, not Peter. Okay, not cool. Peter. Oh, also send us any embarrassing clips of Peter. We can use for our tour visuals. Yeah, we're gonna need those. Looking yeah. to get those up and it's running. Up. Yeah. All right. I don't. Don't. Mm, okay, we'll talk about this later. Is there? We have a lot to cut in post. <laughs> honestly, there's literally like one part we're cutting. Yeah. <laughs> Peter's like my entire career is in shambles. Yeah, it's over. This is the, this is the this is the last one, honestly. Uh, we could find Broden on like which so, uh, what's your tag on like social media? At Broden Plett. On everything. Keep it easy. Yeah. Well, it's I guess so I'm simple. also a bro fan. Must be nice. Bro fan on Twitch, on right? Twitch, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we find you anywhere, Julian? Social media wise. Yeah. Besides Temple, I'm just Julian Connor. I'm not really on Twitter much. I use it for group chats, but I'm on Instagram. Cool. Yeah. Come hang out. Watch my stories. He's got great stories. I got great stories. Yeah. I bet. You know, film student. You're going to love have my to. stories. You kind of have to. You have to. All right. Great. Awesome. And that's it. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace. All right. Thank you. Uh, hold the applause, dude. Thank you. <laughs>